You're not our family. Go home now. On our way to a camping trip with my husband Joseph and his parents, we stopped at a rest area off the highway. As I got out of the RV, Joseph suddenly threw these shocking words at me. What? Excuse me? He seemed a completely different person from the considerate husband I knew. Seeing my surprised face, the three of them smirked and Joseph began to drive the RV away. This can't be happening. They wouldn't leave me here in the middle of nowhere. Panicking, I made a phone call only to receive a jaw-dropping response from my mother-in-law. You really thought you could come along with us? What a nerve you've got. Please don't say that and come back. I was looking forward to our trip. Well, the highway is a one-way street. You can't just turn around. Besides, you're not a part of our family. You're just my daughter-in-law. Know your place. Bye now. We're going to have fun without you. As I was staring dumbfounded at the abruptly ended call, the RV gradually became smaller and smaller until it disappeared from sight. The words that I wasn't a part of their family pierced my heart and ached intensely. This is terrible. They had me prepare everything and then a wave of bitterness and heartache washed over me. Feeling helpless, I had no choice but to call a taxi and go back home. I'm Allison, 31 years old. I got married two years ago to my husband, Joseph, who is the same age as me. He bought a house for us when I hesitated to live with his parents. Although it's within a stone's throw from my in-laws' house, it's better than living with them. However, they are free-spirited people who would suddenly ask me to do a huge amount of shopping or even have me clean their kitchen dirty with dishes and greasy from cooking oil. I cannot deny that it feels like harassment sometimes, but Joseph always tells me, I'm sorry for the trouble my parents are causing you. So I keep telling myself it's time to endure. His parents are both very concerned about appearances. They treat me surprisingly well in front of others, so I'm careful not to say anything negative about them, lest I become the villain. However, I have been hoping for the day when I could understand my in-laws better, but being left behind by my husband was too much of a shock for me to recover from for a while. The discussion about going camping occurred a week ago when we visited his parents on our off day. When I was asked to clean the storage room, I found a lantern. Do you guys go camping? Huh? What are you talking about? I found a lantern in the storage room. Oh, that. We bought it in case of a power outage. We had completely forgotten about it. I see. My father loves camping, and I used to go with him often. So I wondered if you guys also liked camping. When I talked about my father being a camping enthusiast and owning an RV, my husband's eyes lit up with excitement. That's amazing. I've always wanted to try it. Then it's decided. Let's go on our first family camping trip next week for one night and two days. Allison, please rent out an RV. My father cherishes his RV and takes care of it whenever he has free time. I'm not sure if he would lend it to us. Now it's your job to convince him. You better beg him to lend it to us, got it? When I hesitated due to the sudden request, my husband pleaded with me. It's our first time camping and we don't know what we need, so it would be safer to borrow your dad's RV. Besides, I want to please my parents with a fun camping trip. Please, Allison. I had no choice but to agree when asked like that. I immediately went to my father's place and explained the situation. To my surprise, he gladly agreed. Really? Is it okay? Of course. I thought you would refuse because you always polish and take care of it in your spare time. If it's for you, Allison, I'm happy to lend it, and I'm touched by your desire to please Joseph's parents. So take this whole set of camping gear so you can enjoy your first camping trip. If you're a beginner, this and this would be good. My father selected easy-to-use equipment for beginners while explaining various things. I was more than happy to know how much my father cared about me and my heart was warmed. It would be great if this camping trip could help me get closer with my in-laws. All right, I'll work hard to prepare. I reserved a campground where we could use power comfortably and there was a hot spring nearby. When I told my husband and in-laws, they were delighted. We're so lucky to have you, Allison. I'm so excited, I can't wait. I'm glad you're happy. On the day of the trip, I got into the RV driven by my husband full of excitement. We got on the highway and headed for the campground. My heart was pounding with anticipation. After driving for a while, my mother-in-law started being demanding again. Joseph, I'm thirsty. Can we stop at the interchange on our way? 
Mom, I brought some drinks. You can pick any one from here. Hmm, none of them really appeal to me. As my daughter-in-law, you should know my tastes. I I'm sorry. As soon as I got out of the car at the interchange to buy my mother-in-law a Dr. Pepper as she had requested, my husband spoke shocking words to me in a cold tone unlike his usual self. Allison, you're not a part of our family, so go home now. Excuse me, what? What suddenly got into you? He seemed like a complete different person. He wasn't the Joseph that I knew, the one who usually showed consideration for me. As I looked shocked and unable to understand what I had just been said, the three of them laughed with a sneer and the RV started moving again, leaving me behind. They left me here? In the middle of nowhere? Is this some kind of joke? Panicked, I made a call only to receive a shocking response from my mother-in-law. You thought you could really come with us? What a brazen woman. You are not a part of our family. Be aware of that. Bye. We'll enjoy a good family time without you. I stood still, dumbfounded, staring at the abruptly disconnected call. How dare they? They had me prepare everything, and then they left me out? What was Joseph thinking? A surge of bitterness and sorrow overwhelmed me, but unable to deal with these emotions, I called a taxi and went home. The next day, my husband and in-laws came back from the camp and were excitedly talking about their fun experience. They didn't even bother to apologize for leaving me behind. As I started questioning them about the previous day's event, I received an astonishing response. We did it to discipline you as my wife. That's right, Allison. You never understand your place as our daughter-in-law. But there's no need to abandon me on the highway for that. We had to go this far because you wouldn't get it otherwise. We need to properly discipline this failure of a wife before we start living together. Upon hearing the word living together from my mother-in-law, I was startled. I feared that discussions were happening behind my back without my knowledge. What do you mean by living together? I haven't heard anything about this. My parents' place is getting old and is at its limit. I've bought a house where we can invite dad and mom to live with us. From next year, we'll be living together, so I'm going to be stricter with you. Be prepared. I was stunned to hear this was my husband's true intention. Deciding such a major thing without consulting me at all, I couldn't believe it. My trembling anger was seemingly insignificant to the three of them. What's worse, after borrowing the RV, they didn't even bother to refill the gas or thank my father. Allison, why are you just standing around? Hurry up and return the RV to your dad. After cleaning the interior, wash the car, then return it to your father. We don't want to be seen as thoughtless. Looking at the car interior overflowing with trash, I was thoroughly disappointed in them. Not only ignoring me, but also disrespecting my father's kindness. Unforgivable. After cleaning and washing the RV and filling up the gas tank, I returned it. Upon arrival, my father greeted me with a full smile. How was it? Did you enjoy the trip? I wasn't considered as their family, so I didn't go. What? I told him about being abandoned at the highway interchange on the day of the trip and how my husband suddenly changed his attitude and decided on living with his parents without consulting me. Upon hearing this, my father's smiling face transformed into that of a furious demon. I lent it for you, Allison, and those people did such horrible things to discipline you? What a joke. We will not let this slide. I won't let them have their way, Allison. We're getting back at them. How? I have a secret plan. I also have a perfect place for camping. Listen carefully. You're amazing, Dad. It's sure to work. Keeping the wisdom my father bestowed upon me in my heart, I returned to my in-law's house where my husband and his parents were still excited about yesterday's events. Now is the perfect chance to lure them. I smiled lightly, carefully keeping my emotions hidden, and spoke to the three of them in a gentle tone. There is an even more amazing place than where we went yesterday. The autumn leaves are incredibly beautiful right now. Why not do a full-scale camping trip? Instead of staying in an RV, why not pitch a tent and enjoy a barbecue while looking at the scenery? At night, you can see a sky full of stars. Really? Where? It's a secret spot that I don't want to tell anyone else. Can I come too to fulfill my role as your wife? That's good! It's gonna be fun. It's in a secluded area, so I'll drive. I'll act right as your wife and as my in-law's daughter-in-law. So can I join you guys? As expected, my husband and his parents were overjoyed and agreed for me to accompany them. We decided to go camping again the following weekend. Just like always, they dumped all the preparation on me and their pestering to teach me discipline only got worse each day. I carried my secret plan and meticulously arranged for my revenge. 
and the day of our trip arrived. I borrowed an RV from my father, drove to a remote campsite, and my husband and in-laws were thrilled. Wow, it's like a private site. They looked around restlessly, excited about the new environment. We'll go for a walk and enjoy the scenery. Allison, set up our tent. Understood. Enjoy your walk. Come on, let's go quickly. With those words, I saw off the joyous trio and began preparing for the camp. Then, about 30 minutes later, my husband called in a panic. We're oh, lost. I can't find your dad's RV. I'm on my way home with it. What? What do you mean? Don't worry, I left the bare minimum for you to enjoy a real camp. This was the plan my father had devised. He suggested that they should experience some wild camping, where they would have to get everything themselves, like living on a deserted island, rather than a convenient camping site with electricity and a hotel resort nearby. You better set up your tent early and look for wood to start your fire. I know you guys have no lighter, so you'll have to start the fire yourself. I've left the pot so you can at least cook rice. You left us behind? You were the ones who said that I, as a wife, wasn't part of the family and shouldn't go camping with you guys, so I took you up to the campsite and tearfully went home. That's what you wanted to do, right? Having been hit with my logic, my husband was momentarily silenced. Enjoy camping with just your family. I was about to hang up when my husband, enraged, began yelling at me. Don't be ridiculous. If you don't come back now, I'll get a divorce from you. All right, let's get divorced. You'll regret saying that. Being abandoned on the highway, finding my father's cherished RV filled with trash, I have had enough of living with your parents who does nothing but disrespect me. And you're the ones who will regret it. Go to hell, you stupid woman. Utterly disgusted by my husband, who abruptly hung up, I started driving. I was actually nearby, but I lost all will to go pick them up. After a while, I received another call from my husband. His tone had completely changed, and I could hear his confusion and trembling voice over the phone. I, I can't set up the tent no matter what. It's starting to rain and my parents are getting angry at me. It's getting cold too. What should I do? It's, it's cold. Regretting already? That was quick. Why don't you look up how to set up a tent on YouTube? Forget the tent. My father pulled it too hard and ripped it apart. Allison, you've had your fun. Now fix your attitude and come pick us up. I'm not coming. If you walk for about an hour, you'll reach a broad road. If you're not going to camp, then come down here with your stuff. What? Just because I'm asking you nicely doesn't mean you can get all high and mighty. Realizing this was my husband's true nature, my feelings for him had entirely cooled. All I could do was sigh. Screw this. I'm going to dump all this useless stuff. Just wait till we get home. Someone owns that place. It's a private property. If you dump anything here, you'll be sued for illegal dumping. You know, there's a sign there that clearly states no littering. I don't care. My husband, speaking with a strong tone, didn't seem to believe that I was serious about the divorce. I had to show him the reality. After our divorce, I'll be demanding compensation for the emotional distress from all the harassment you've done to me. What? Wait, the divorce is a joke, right? I'm serious. Our conversation from the time I was left behind on the highway is recorded on my dad's RV's dash cam, so you can't deny it. Not just that, I've also recorded the conversations when you were harassing me afterwards. Let's calm down. We don't have any savings because we've been paying our mortgage. If you leave, I won't have anyone to cook and clean for us, which will be a problem. You should think before you speak. I'm not your maid. If you don't agree to the divorce, I'll take it to court. It's going to become a big deal and everyone in the family will know. My husband, who's always conscious of others' judgment, got silent. I could hear his parents fussing around in the background, but it no longer mattered to me. After that, my husband attempted to say something with a preface of, you know, but then the call abruptly cut off. Soon after, I started receiving multiple calls from my in-laws, but I ignored them completely. After a while, the call stopped ringing, so their phones must have died out of battery. My father's revenge plan was a huge success. On my way home, I picked up the divorce papers, filled them out, and left them on the table before returning to my sweet childhood home where my kind father lived. For some reason, my husband and in-laws took three hours to descend the mountain that would normally take only one hour. They should have used Google Maps instead of bothering me with calls. How foolish. My husband, who was desperate to have me stay with him, came to my parents' house, his anger apparent. Allison, get out here now. I'll teach you a lesson. If you have something to say, talk to my father. He's pretty upset, so it might not end well for you. My huge and intimidating father stood in front of my husband at the entrance. He went off at my husband and shut him down. Moreover, they left their tent and camping gear in the mountains and were sued for illegal dumping by the owner of the mountain. The person who filed the lawsuit was my father, who had inherited the land from my grandfather. There were a lot of trespassing and dumping incidents happening regularly on the land, 
So security cameras were installed, and it was clear who was responsible for the mess. I wonder what kind of punishment will be handed down. After finalizing our divorce, I demanded and received $1 million each from my husband and in-laws for the emotional distress they caused me. Unable to pay off their mortgage, my husband's house was foreclosed and he now lives with his parents in their leaky house, living modestly as a family of three. No use crying over spilled milk, as they say. I returned to the company I used to work at before getting married and I'm regaining the lifestyle that suits me. Next month, I plan to go camping with my parents and I'm sure that I will have a blast then.